as you guys are aware on this podcast, I'm a little bit of a Bergen whore, Bergen, Bergen. I'm a bit of a Bergen whore, a right? Bergen addict. So I'm not 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 pronouncing the name of the club properly, but you know, I'm obsessed with the club, of course. Um, as I'm obsessed with most um dance music venues, especially the more um legendary places that have kind of contributed to the overall story and legacy of techno music, specifically house, disco, and all that good stuff. Right? I'm obsessed with it. Watch the documentaries, follow the labels, artists, um, watch the live streams, all that good stuff. I'm a fan, I'm a fan, I'm a fan, and I've also been lucky enough in my time on this um godforsaken planet to be a promoter. To be a dj in my own right you know before this pandemic here i was playing in local bars and pubs for you know every other weekend here and there and it was a great time absolutely loved everything about it but you know my kind of tradition yearly tradition that i would kind of always do was kind of a yearly pilgrimage to Berghain in berlin where i sort of book a weekend out of, off from work usually you know thursday to monday friday to monday and essentially you know get myself a nice cushy airbnb and just go ham for those four days in one of the best clubs in the world and um it sort of contributed to my overall um education in dance music and it's also kind of opened my eyes up to you know what can be done in the clubbing space and you know basically uh elevated my um levels of what was that called elevate my taste levels or elevate or something that i'm willing to enjoy because you know we have some great venues in london but we do have some you know rink-a-dink shanky um you know places that probably shouldn't be opened and once you go to a place like burger king your standards just get elevated there's no way you can kind of accept mediocre nights mediocre sound systems mediocre people mediocre staff you just always kind of expect that high level of course you can't expect it in any other place but that because berlin's a bit of an anomaly even in Germany let alone Europe let alone the world so you have to take it with a pinch of salt but I always love kind of hearing from the inside in from the inside and people around the scene about what goes on behind the scenes that we don't really know about Q we're going to speak about here so this is a podcast called Berlin Big Wigs I just found randomly because I was searching for Bergheim on Twitter randomly the other day happy to stumble upon this podcast which they released episode three where they speak um, to a former Ber- um, Bergheim door pick i think that's security or still door staff member who essentially divulges some you know um lesser known things about the club and just generally speaks very glowingly about her time there um so it says the following um this is from Ber- so what is it? berlin big weeks episode three it says in this episode um jill bit Be- jill Biting the host, I guess, and Julia um, go clubbing. While well, almost Berghain is the most prolific club in Berlin and one of the most famous techno clubs in the world, bringing Ravens techno lovers to its doors, but not now, but not always through, not not, not oh, but not always through. Uh, okay, cool. Since two thousand four. They wanted to explore just what it was. Uh, it takes place in a special place. Uh, Jill and Julia are joined by ex and bouncer Christine, who shares her knowledge and her joy for the club. From a virtual tour of the space and sharing what it's like to work in there, to the music, the sex, and the keeping the community safe, Christine gives us an insight into the beautiful underground world of the world's best party. The episode is brought to you by Bear Radio. If you enjoyed it, yeah, cool. But again, really excellent, web- excellent episode. Um, I love that the fact that she was a bouncer there. She kind of provides a real inside scoop as to how they go about picking and selecting people and i love the point that she made about it's less about exclusion and more so about maintaining whatever sanctity exists inside the Bergheim walls uh, and panorama bar of course and just ensuring the community is kept safe because the great thing about it reading up a bit more over the weekend is that it feels like they went above and beyond the people involved in Bergheim to maintain the legacy and the tradition and what they built with snacks, right? The original club. Um, and obviously also the, the parties they used to do in other places all around, all around the place, isn't it, right? And they kind of went out of their way to make sure that they were first catering to the, you know, the gay scene that they were kind of known for and they kind of way to keep that community of i would say maybe it's expanded now to the lgbtq community keep those guys safe and provide a space for them a safe haven where they can go and essentially let their hair down and have a whale of a time and then anyone else who wants to come into it has to sort of abide by their rules like they're the ones that are sort of wouldn't say they they get priority which is definitely something you don't see in most you know places let alone you know major markets like berlin um where i don't know maybe here in london most of the time especially with our clubbing scene or most places right you feel like as long as you got the money you can go where you want that's how you've kind of led to believe but i like the fact that you know it's probably of all the mega clubs in the world it maybe is probably one of the 
cheapest you know when you kind of equate lineups and whatever it may be <laughs> and drink prices and just how to get around the city it's probably one of the cheapest and it also has a strict strict door policy right it's super random how people get selected to go in and out um she mentions in this podcast actually Kristen, how um they can kind of sniff out the fakers and the fronters which is something very illuminating something that i kind of um long suspected and i think people kind of got a feeling of as well and it makes complete sense i think you know working at a place that i'd imagine you know what friday to to, to monday all hours of the day week in week out um, seeing many different people from all different parts of the world you quite quickly become a little bit attuned how people go because I remember even for myself working in retail you 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 start to understand humans a lot better working in retail working in sort of service industry I think most people would attest right there's very very rarely do you find us a person that works in a service industry as a complete dick or a complete cunt right because they've worked in industries in places where they've kind of had to enjoy dickens and cunts so they're a little bit more you know mellow and i'd imagine working you know at a door like that and being supposed to so many different people you kind of pick up things and ticks and little things that people do that don't even realize and you're able to kind of suss out who's here just for the hype and who's here to really kind of get down and you know have a good time and contribute as much as they can and that's the first thing i realized when i went um i realized that very quickly that um i was like oh no wonder they make such a big effort with the door because once you get in there everyone kind of just fits there's no one that kind of looks out of place there's no one that's just deaf to be seen it's just people that can again like it's very rare i think the only other time that i can think where it's really like that is when maybe you go to not hill carnival right where people are just dancing like it's a thing it's a, i don't know it's an odd thing that happens in I guess in most scenes when it gets popular things just you know you you kind of um introduce people in the scene that probably aren't there for the right reasons but it's just a shame that in club music and dance especially when you look back at some of the older videos of nightclubs and stuff and older scenes and you know seminal places and moments in time the first thing you've noticed maybe because of the lack of smartphones but people are dancing people are absolutely losing themselves right and fair enough they're off their tits whatever they may be but they're really going for it and you don't really see that too tough now everyone's you know posing and doing whatever being at the sides you know just kind of you know being a little bit too aware of their surroundings and the thing that's really you know liberating it's just to go in the burger and for the most part see people that you know have probably no business dancing just two stepping their asses off right shaking their head you know taking up their top just going absolutely nuts and again the only ever other time i've seen that happen is maybe not in your carnival the people really get after it in london like you know it's the, one of the rare times you get to party outdoors you know drink you know crazy amounts smoke a bunch of weed and get up to all sorts of debauchery without the police kind of telling you to go home so people just take advantage of it right great food great music great sound systems um again that's what makes the place special so as annoying as it can be for people that don't get in it honestly is worth it once you do get in because the selecting and the picking again as i, I think actually kind of changed our mind on it Kristen. it's like you know it's less about not letting you in and more so about maintaining whoever's in there who's actually is a sort of fabric of that club right because once the hype dies out right the, the kind of the chances and the one star trip advisor people will never go back there again so the people that actually keep the lights on they're making sure that they prioritize them and i thought that was awesome and then it also led me to this other um topic on the techno subreddit which i recommend you check out i think it's called what's it techno was it the, the thing is called go back it's called something uh it's called tell me about your experience at Berghain and everyone's sort of writing their review and how they kind of you know what they kind of got up to obviously in Berghain yeah, standard thing and i guess this person here made a really good point about the whole you know because a lot of people were moaning about not being able to get in and basically saying you know they didn't really have a good time queuing and you know there's better places to go to blah 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 and they made a really good point which kind of echoes what Kristen said in the podcast and said the following um it says um everyone's saying they turn away people for no reason clearly have no clue about the experience of the club and also just how numbers work the club has a capacity of 200 what two two thousand five hundred people roughly doubled on new year's, new year's day birthday and oscar night around ten thousand people try to gain every single weekend bearing in mind that if you get the stamp or the wristband now you can come back in and now as please it's not sustainable to let everyone in and i had no idea that the capacity was that low i think Chris mentioned in an interview that it's like 1500 i think so that might be i don't know that might be the actual number i don't know but it's somewhere between 1500 and 2500 when you get in there i swear to god right especially the main Berghain floor it feels like there's like 5000 people in there i don't know why maybe because it's so dark that's the one thing as well it's amazing it's pitch sometimes you go in there and it's 
pitch black and depending on how the the you know the lighting guy is kind of messing around with the stuff but sometimes you go in and it's dark you can't see in front of your hand sometimes right and just the sound is blaring but all you feel are bodies and this kind of swaying motion and you feel like it's you feel like it's ten thousand people in it then you go up to panorama bar and it, you feel as if there's like two thousand people in there too because they're all s- s- tightly squished up you know right up until against the window next to the dj booth just losing their heads so to hear that there's such the capacity isn't as big as it, i thought it would be and the people that try to get in there are numerous it really does make you feel a little bit um, grateful that you get in i'm really chuffed like i've only never not got in once and that was the one time i went with a group of lads right we happened to be on a work trip and we went to go into burka and embarrassingly we, we tried to get in first as a group and they obviously so I noticed said get the fuck out of here and then f- because we were drunk we thought it would be smart we thought we were being clever by um exchanging jackets we change our jackets and then thought we could go in one by one and of course it's like i recognize you. you just you know what i mean there's not many um groups of five british dudes that look the way you do with the you know different races in a group i remember who you are like go get fucked so we left and i think we ended up going to like cat blue or something like that right but that's the only time I never got in. Most, all the other times I usually was getting because I got on my own. I'd usually try and, you know, time it to go on a Sunday when the queues are not as busy and, you know, maybe it's a bit more chance to get in and whatever it may be, right? I, I'm lucky in that respect. But I feel even more lucky that the fact that the numbers are really, really low capacity wise, considering the amount of people I try and get in because sometimes the queue goes way 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 back to the taxi rank sometimes like a spiral back out, like, you know, past where all the taxis are. It gets insane. Anyway, he continues. He says, also as a club, gets popular you get more and more posers that want to get in and say they've been in whilst they will whilst they will ruin the safe space that is inside women fully naked guys everything each other in in a line cubicle sessions of 12 people um guy that drinks your here yeah, course so letting people by order of arrival is not an option 100 percent agree and that's what she meant um in the podcast it's not about you not getting in it's about maintaining the sanctity of the place and also not freaking people out because i remember one time this is a very poignant moment i think maybe the first time i went there i was just like my eyes were just like open like just wide open i was like oh my god i can't believe i'm in here just like absorbing everything around me just walking around my own just like tripping balls thinking oh my god this is amazing and i remember being on the main dance floor and just like staring at i think it might have been dj harvey playing and unfortunately in my line of sight there was this girl that was dancing in like a bondage thing like a little strap but it just exposed her breast and she just and again i wasn't even looking at her i was just looking at harvey just like thinking wow i'm what i'm watching or listening to dj harvey play in the main floor of the burger and he's absolutely he's playing in a way that I'd never thought he'd be, he'd play at like Burger, right? If you know DJ Harvey, he's mostly known as a kind of disco guy. So for him to be absolutely rocking that floor just took my breath away. So just staring at him, my jaw opened. And if I think the girl caught my eye and then she kind of got self-conscious and all magically kind of covered up a little bit. And I was like, oh shit, I forgot where I was. I was like, hey, stop staring and at the DJ and dance. Like turn around, turn away from the booth and just do your thing. So that immediately snapped out of it and just started let loose, took my top off. I was just absolutely going for it. And then, you know, whenever I did glance back to the booth, she obviously relaxed too. But it was a kind of understanding of like, hey, this is their space you're coming into their room their church their their building um kind of respected by not being weird right and that's when i kind of had to kind of relax and get in you know kind of you know as you, you know right ease myself into it once i did i was like oh okay now i definitely understand what's going on so that is one of them and it continues here the door policy is not to create a false sense of exclusivity it has always been there because Bergen originated from snacks a very decadent gay party that wouldn't have survived had they let in a straight to take over the club scene because it's quote-unquote cool at the end of the day the door policy is here to protect the people who are inside but also protect them some of the tourists that think they're up for it but would scream at a fool having a gay guy touch their fight exactly you have to be very comfortable just being around people that you probably don't necessarily be around in your everyday life and again i think for the most part if you're really about this techno life and you know the origins of it especially european wise and you're just being around things you shouldn't be freaked out about people doing whatever they're doing it's nothing to do with you it's not especially within the dark rooms they're well away from people they're sort of hidden behind curtains it's like you don't need to expose yourself to that if you don't want to enjoy the music have a good time buy a drink have a chat with somebody in the toilet line wherever it may be and just keep it moving um the continuous says unfortunately they have about 10 seconds to decide if you're one not one of them and even if you do um even, and even though you might not be there will be a collateral damage yes you might queue for three hours and risk getting turned away but you know what you're setting it up for when you go of course and that's a great thing i think that's one of the saving graces about berlin in general is that even if you don't get in there's so many clubs just around the area of where Bergheim is right it's a bit of a don't get me wrong it's a little bit it's a little bit out of the way but still 10 minutes 
away from the burger and you can immediately go to Cata Blue. I'm pretty sure it's around the corner from there. Um, the old Grace Mulan used to be not too far from there too. And many other, you know, numerous bars in like a Copa Sotor and all those kind of places. So it's not, you know, you don't have to go too far to go for a night out and have a bit of a boogie. So that makes it a lot more easy to take. And also, you know, again, it's this exclusive plus, isn't it? You want to go there because everyone wants to go there. So if you can't get in, you don't you don't take it too personally. But again, I'm uh, it's such an amazing podcast. I really recommend you check it out. It's about an hour. I've listened to it a couple of times actually. Of course, you know, naturally with COVID, you're sort of reminiscing on the nights of old. But definitely check it out. Um, it's called Berlin Bigwigs. It's available on all the podcasts and platforms. A podcast by Bear Radio, um, with the host Julian, uh, Jill and Julia, um, interviewing this uh, former bouncer called Kristen recommend you check it out definitely um recommended listening if you're a dance music aficionado like myself